Hello everyone and welcome. We are sitting inside of the 2020 Nissan Nismo GTR and so that's what we're going to be discussing in this video. Now recently Nissan gave me the opportunity to check out the 50th anniversary GTR, the Trek package GTR and what we are in right now which is the Nismo GTR coming in just over $210 thousand dollars so as i am sure will come up in the comments we are going to get to you know the two things that i think most people are going to talk about with this thing the fact that it's old yes it's been around the block the gtr was introduced for the model year 2008 and of course the price tag uh, both of those i think are going to be big talking points but the focus of this video is not uh the repetitive talking points that you will likely hear about this car instead we're going to focus on the technical changes that make this nissan's fastest gtr ever which they have built uh, there are actually some pretty cool changes even though this is essentially you know in, in many ways very similar to the car that came out 12 or so years ago so first we are going to talk about the engine so this has a 3.8 liter twin turbo engine yes it's that same 3.8 uh, that we know and love from Nissan's history with this GTR. Now, just like the previous 2019 model year, this still just has 600 horsepower, just 600 horsepower, it's plenty, 481 pound-feet of torque. Same numbers, same torque curve as the previous 2019 Nissan GTR, and yet this one is quicker. So how is that? Well, they've made some changes to the turbocharger. So they now have incorporated the Nissan GT3 cars, uh, turbochargers, into this road car so the race car into the road car as far as the turbochargers are concerned what changes they made to those turbochargers instead of 11 vanes on that turbine wheel they have moved down to 10 vanes and each of those vanes is 0.3 millimeters less uh, thick so they've reduced the thickness of those vanes and so what does all that mean well Nissan says that that is good for a 14.5 percent reduction in mass of that spinning turbine wheel which results in a 25 4% reduction in rotational inertia, which results in a 20% improvement uh, in getting that engine response. So the time it takes from you know not having your foot on the pedal at all to flooring it, the time it takes to get full torque has been decreased by 20%. You get it 20% quicker. Uh, so there is an improvement in turbo lag, a significant improvement in turbo lag. Would I say that I can feel it? I haven't driven them back to back and the car still does have, I mean, even if you're in the appropriate gear, put your foot down, you do wait for that torque to come on. Uh, they have added, as you might be able to faintly hear from inside the cabin, they have added those exhaust crackles and pops. So a little bit of fuel enrichment with late timing and you get some uh, pops in the exhaust as you're on those downshifts, which is cool. Uh, so the engine response, 20% better response. Now, what does that mean real world? So what Nissan says is if you take two cars, if you take the 2019 and you put it next to the 2020 Nismo GTR, you line them both up on a highway at 55 miles per hour and both of them floor it at the exact same time. After five seconds, the 2020, same horsepower, same torque, will be ahead of the 2019 by 2.8 meters. Now, that's a little bit over half a car length. So is it all that impressive? Not necessarily, but it is cool that they have actively taken a step to reduce the turbo lag in this car. And I feel like, you know, that is something that is pretty noticeable in this vehicle is the turbo lag. So they've taken steps to reduce it. I think that's cool. Now, how much faster is the 2020 versus the 2019? Well, Nissan's internal test track, they say this car is 2.5 seconds faster around their development track versus the 2019. So that is a serious improvement. The fact that they've shaved, you know, two and a half seconds off their track time. And we'll get into some of the more other reasons for that aside from reducing turbo lag. Because honestly, going around a track, you're not going to have to worry too much about turbo lag. You're going to be keeping that engine revved up and it's not going to be a huge concern. So another big focus on this car has been weight reduction. It's about 45 pounds less than the 2019 Nismo GTR. It's about 68 pounds less than the base premium GTR. So where does that weight savings come from? Well, they've used a ton of carbon fiber. So the front bumper is carbon fiber, the front hood is carbon fiber, the front fenders are carbon fiber, the roof is carbon fiber, helping to lower that center of gravity, the trunk is carbon fiber, the rear bumper is carbon fiber, the only body panels, if you look at this exterior uh, and say, you know, what's not carbon fiber? The door sills, those side sills are carbon fiber, the doors are made out of aluminum, and the rear fenders are made out of steel. 
Now, here's my thing with this, because the car is $210,000, right? So that's pretty expensive. And they kind of went all out, but not quite all out with the carbon fiber. So if it were me, if I had the active choice of saying, where would I want carbon fiber? I would have rather had the doors and rear fenders than carbon fiber, and then the front and rear bumpers, if they don't want to make them carbon fiber, fine, do a plastic, a uh, fiberglass, whatever lightweight material they want to do, you know, not as light, not as strong as carbon fiber, but those are those high incident areas. So the front and rear bumper where you're going to be likely uh, to have an incident if someone's going to, you know, rear end you or if you perhaps nudge something with the front bumper. Those in plastic, to me, you know, it's a little bit heavier, but it's so much more cost effective. And then you could take out the weight savings on the doors and the rear fenders. I think you could kind of offset things or just make it all carbon fiber because it's $210,000. So that's my kind of thoughts on what they should have done. Still having steel in the rear fenders is like, why are we still using steel if we're actually really concerned about weight reduction? And as far as the weight reduction, you know, this car is still about 3,900 pounds, so it's not light, and, and it's not like the focus of the GTR was ever to be this really light car. So the, the weight difference you know, versus the standard premium GTR is less than 2% of the car's overall weight. Uh, so it's a difference, yes, you know, 68 pounds versus the premium, 45 pounds versus the previous generation Nismo. Uh, it's always great to get weight out, but it's still a pretty hefty car. Now, where else have they taken out some weight? So Nissan uh, says that the combined weight reduction out of the wheels, do you want to take a guess? Perhaps 10 pounds they've taken out of the wheels, maybe five pounds, one pound, forged aluminum raised wheels, very cool wheels, great tires on it, uh, is 100 grams. So about a fifth of a pound has been taken out combined weight of the wheels. So that's great. Now, as far as the brakes, there is some real weight savings there, and that's not only rotational inertia, but it's also unsprung mass, so it's great that it it comes standard with these carbon ceramic, massive carbon ceramic brakes. Nissan says they're the largest used in any Japanese sports car's history. 16.1 uh, inches in the front, 15.3 in the rear, just massive. I mean, 16.1, that's bigger than some wheels on cars. Uh, you know, today's cars are generally larger wheeled, but 16.1 inch brakes, massive. Anyways, it saves 36 pounds versus steel rotor. So an impressive amount of weight reduction done simply by switching over to these crazy expensive, uh, but very heat resistant brakes. Now, these brakes, they have yellow calipers, yellow paint and calipers. Why did they choose yellow paint? Well, yes, it looks good, but it turns out that it was the best color for dealing with heat. So long term, they didn't have to worry about, you know, discoloring as much fade, as much distortion of that color, long term use through heat cycling, and it's good for temperatures up to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. So very impressive uh, that the calipers can handle that heat and the paint can handle that heat, and the rotors themselves, supposedly good for up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit and still have good braking. So carbon ceramics meant for abuse on the track, which is what this car is really designed for, the Nismo GTR. Uh, you need to take it out onto a track to fully appreciate it. Now, everyone knows I love talking about tires, and I'm excited to talk about them on this car because there's actually a really significant change, and perhaps it's the most significant change for this car uh, from a number standpoint. So there is a new compound, same size tire as the previous uh, Nismo GTR and Nissan GTR. So if you want to put these newer tires on your old GTR, I would recommend doing that. Uh, but new compound for them for the 2020 model year, 7% improvement in grip. And that is very meaningful. So, you know, I think the, the turbo lag thing can kind of be overplayed as far as how much of a difference is there. Uh, the weight reduction certainly overplayed because it's less than 2% of a difference of this car's weight. 7% grip, I don't think people grasp how much of a difference that really really is. That is huge. And if I were to bet my money on where those 2.5 seconds came from around their development track, I would put most of my money on the fact that they have these different tires. So it's a new compound. It's a new tread pattern. I'll show you kind of a difference looking at the rear tires. So, you know, not super noticeable as far as looking at the tread. Uh, and yet the tread has 11% greater contact patch. You can notice a slight difference in the camber uh, and where this tire is actually touching the road based on where it's picking up that dirt. I pulled off into the same little dirt lot here uh, to film these two side by side. So interesting to see that change, uh, but not a huge difference in the tread pattern, uh, but enough so that they say 11% greater contact patch, overall 7% more grip. 
And as far as lateral cornering, it is able to hold a 5% greater cornering force. 5% greater cornering force, all you did was change the tires. That is a huge, huge numbers improvement as far as what it will translate to in the real world. Now, there's also been some focus on the aerodynamics of this car. So it still has a drag coefficient of just 0.26. And you know, by today's standards, yes, there are cars that are getting below 0.26, but 0.26 is still very respectable, especially when you start to look at the shape of this car. You know, it has this kind of menacing mean appearance to it. It's kind of blockier than a lot of the cars that have lower drag coefficients than 0.26, and yet it's able to achieve that very aerodynamic design. And they've improved the downforce on this car without increasing uh, that drag coefficient. So cool that they've been able to keep it at 0.26. Apparently these front uh, fender louvers, uh, which are carbon fiber, you can see those kind of scallop louvers on the front and left side of the car. Those are helping to pull heat away from the engine bay. They also, they say they increase downforce on the front end by 15 pounds, and they do not increase increase drag. So impressive that they've made some aero tweaks to the car and maintain that drag coefficient of just 0.26. As far as the suspension, uh, they say that because they've taken out some of the weight, they've chosen to go with softer damping. So rebound, uh, which is when you are letting that tire drop, it's moving away from the vehicle, has been softened by 20% and compression has been softened by 5%. So when the wheel, when you hit a bump and it moves towards the body. And so as a result, honestly, when I got in this thing versus the previous, I believe I've driven a 2018 Nismo GTR, it does actually feel like a softer, more compliant ride. I mean, the Nismo GTR, if you put it in R mode with the suspension, uh, it's just going to bat you around everywhere you go, and the whole thing shakes over every little bump. But if you put it in this comfort mode here, it's actually not too bad as far as, you know, what kind of car you're in and what the ride feels like. It's still stiff, don't get me wrong, uh, but it does feel better than the previous Nismo GTR, which I drove, and I believe some of that has to do with softening the damping of the suspension. All right, let's get to the juicy bit that everyone likes to talk about. Is this thing still relevant or is it this ancient dinosaur uh, that no longer matters in the supercar world? And, you know, I've actually been thinking about that question quite a bit as I've been driving this over about the past week and a half. And when, when I try to point out, you know, what, what about this car feels old? Because, yes, we know it's old simply because it came out in 2008. But what about this car actually feels old? And as far as the all-wheel drive system, it's a fantastic all-wheel drive system. It's able to transfer torque from 100% at the rear up to a 50-50 split. So very cool for a sports car to be able to still have 100% on the rear tires uh, when you want it, up to 50% to the front tires when you need it. Very cool that it has that. You know, 600 horsepower is plenty. We've started to get into these crazy horsepower wars and, you know, you can get into 700 horsepower cars for 60 grand. Great. I think it's awesome that we can do that. But is it all street usable? In this car, you can use every one of those 600 horsepowers because of that great all-wheel drive system and 600 is a lot the car is quick zero to 60 well under three seconds so you don't have to worry about speed in this thing it's not like it's slow suddenly because 10 years have gone by uh, so the all-wheel drive system's good the engine is good the interior honestly in this nismo is fantastic i mean i i hear a lot of rattles in many of the gtrs which i've been in but as far as the appearance here and i haven't heard too many rattles in this one uh thankfully at two hundred ten thousand dollars uh and you've got Apple CarPlay, so it kind of brings the infotainment into the 21st century. You've got all these cool gauges that you can look at while you're driving, oil pressure boost, that kind of thing. Uh, so, you know, there's the interior is still nice to me. The engine is nice. The all-wheel drive system is nice. The ride is fine. The tires are great. Uh, what gives away that this thing is old? And really, there's only two things that I can point at. One of them being weight, and I don't really think that this is fair to point out. The car is really heavy, but so are a ton of today's cars. We unfortunately don't have too many companies that are really focusing on reducing the weight of their cars. There's some good ones out there, uh, but it doesn't seem to be a major focus of many of the cars out there. A lot of them kind of seem to prioritize how much power do they have. Let's not worry about weight. People don't seem to care all that much. So it is heavy for what it is. Uh, in the $200,000 supercar range, you can certainly get into some lighter vehicles than this. Uh, but I don't necessarily think that makes it feel irrelevant for today's time. So the one thing that is uh, not that great in this car and really truly shows this car's age is the transmission. So what are my problems with the transmission? Well, if you're on a track or if you're driving seven tenths of your, you know, your highest performance or above, you're not going to notice problems with it. It's very quick shifting. It is capable of very quick shifts. 
Uh, the thing is, if you drive below seven tenths and you're just kind of cruising around town, it's loud, it's really clunky, and it's slow to respond. So it's kind of everything you don't want in transmission, and that's what shows the age, because this thing was developed, you know, mid-2000, 2005, maybe they started developing this transmission. And so when you drive, I mean, okay, I'm in sixth gear right now. I put my foot down. First of all, you get that loud clunk. It individually drops through sixth, fifth, fourth, third, okay, now we start to accelerate. So, you know, in today's age, we have the ability, you can build in the logic to say, hey, if someone's driving at 35 miles per hour and you're in sixth gear and you floor it, you should probably just go straight to second or third and then give it full power instead of going fifth, fourth, third. And that logic can be built in. So that's why I don't understand. It's in R mode. So it's in this like aggressive gearing mode. And yet it's not capable of skipping gears. It has to go one by one through them. Dual clutch transmissions don't have to do that. They tend to pre-select the next lowest gear, uh, but that doesn't mean it, you know, it would still save time if it just went straight to second or third rather than going through all those gears on the way. The other thing, so I don't know if you heard when I put my foot down, that loud dunk. And it's just a kind of a brutal transmission. I mean, these things are pretty bulletproof. You hear about them just tracking all day long and not having any problems. Uh, and, and so the transmission is great for that. But as far as refinement, it is not a refined transmission. It's loud, it's clunky, and it's super slow to respond. So typically, if you want to be in the right gear and you're driving around town, you're going to want to put it into the manual mode. And then it's fine. The shifts are fine. They're decently quick. You've still got that clunkiness to it if you're not going all out. They're actually nice and smooth if you're just, you know, flat out going for it. Uh, but in the kind of puttering around mode is where this thing does not shine and, and it's making all kinds of noises and it's not smooth transitions. One thing I will give them credit for, which I have been impressed by, you know, this is an old DCT and it's very good at crawling. So if you get down to one or two miles per hour, this thing just does it all day long. I was sitting in Monterey car week traffic for a good week uh, and this thing would do it all day long, no problem, crawl around at one mile per hour and you know, that's clutch is slipping. So I'm wondering, is there gonna be too much heat building up? Is it gonna cope with it? It did just fine and it's nice engagement. You know, it's similar in feel to a torque converter and you don't always get that with, you know, these clutch transmissions that are trying to slip so that you can inch along at low speed. So I have been impressed at the low speed operation and when you're going all out, it's a great transmission. But as a daily driver, the transmission shows its age uh, versus what we have in today's modern cars. All right, so now let's touch on price. So the GTR Premium starts at about 113,000, the track package at about 145,000, and this at about 210,000. So 65,000 over the track package GTR. The track package GTR has the same wheels, same tires. It has the same engine with the new turbochargers. It has the same horsepower, same torque. It has the carbon fiber roof. So for 65 grand more, what are you getting? You're getting some carbon fiber body panels and you're getting, you know, those carbon ceramic brakes. The carbon ceramic brakes are a $15,000 option if you choose to get them on the track package. So that puts you at a $50,000 gap for, you know, getting into the Nismo here, which, you know, 40 to 50 pounds lighter than the track package. So not a huge difference between the two and a massive difference in price. So if you want the quickest, you know, this is the quickest, but the GTR track pack is very close. And even still, it's not like, you know, the base premium version is slow. It's down, you know, 35 horsepower, 565, uh, even less torque as far as the differential between them. So the, the GTR at that 113, it, it's hard to justify bumping it $100,000 nearly to get into the Nismo. So are the performance upgrades worth it? That depends on the buyer, of course. Uh, from a performance standpoint, it doesn't really seem like it. My my like personal thing, if I were to choose one of these, I'd probably get the base premium at 113, put on the tires from the GTR Nismo, which, you know, the new tires, which are fantastic, they've got more grip, uh, and then you've got a killer car, uh, and you saved yourself nearly 100 grand. But truthfully, I don't think this car is irrelevant today. You know, a lot of people think, oh, it's, it's super dated, but it, the performance is still there, uh, and the increase in performance has happened throughout the years. Uh, the price is what's kind of a, a big deterrent there, but it still seems quite relevant even in today's world, uh, 12 years later, and I think the only really thing that shows its age is that transmission. So, oh, 
overall, it's a super solid car. It's crazy fast. You know, the launch mode, uh, getting zero to 60 well under three seconds. Like this thing is pretty impressive. So a big thank you to all of you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below.